move to Mendel's dihybrid cross. Right, so as I've discussed before, dihybrid cross basically was a cross in which Mendel crossed two organisms, two or more organisms, and he studied two pairs of contrasting characteristics, right? Two pairs. And now in Mendel's dihybrid cross, we are going to basically study the cross between two seeds. So cross between seeds. And in these seeds, we are going to study two characteristics, right? One is the shape of the seed, obviously, and the other is the color of the seed. So these are the two characteristics that we're going to study in Mendel's dihybrid cross, right? So let's get started without any further ado. So what did Mendel do? Mendel took two seeds, right? Mendel took two seeds, right? Now one seed was round and yellow. Round and yellow. Whereas the other seed was wrinkled and green. So yellow and green are the colors and round and wrinkled are the shape. So you can just show a bit of wrinkleness here. This is round. So round and wrinkled color. Round and yellow and wrinkled and green. These are the color and shape. Now, what are the genotypes? They were all homozygous. Okay, always we are going to consider a, uh, in the first cross as homozygous. The P generation will always have homozygous parents. So round and yellow, the phenotype was capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y. Now please remember that round is dominant in this cross and yellow is dominant in terms of color. Wrinkled is recessive in terms of shape and green is recessive in terms of color. So the phenotype, sorry, the genotype of this was RR, YY, capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y. The phenotype was round and yellow. And for this, wrinkled and green, the genotype was small r, small r, small y, small y. Okay, recessive. Now these were the P generation. Remember, beta, this is the P generation. Now, capital R, capital Y, capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y, and then small r, small r, small y, small y. So these were the genotypes. Now, when there was gamete formation, now remember, here each gamete will get one allele for each trait. So that means one allele for your shape and one allele for the color, right? Don't say here, sir, how can they have two alleles? No, it's one allele for the shape and one allele for the color. Together, when they fuse, when the gametes will fuse, ultimately they'll form a complete progeny, which will have allelic pairs for both, right? So here we're just representing allelic pairs together for two different traits. YY is for the color and RR is for the shape. So let's have a look at the allelic pairs. Obviously, the gametes can only have one kind of allelic, uh, you know, distribution in this case, capital R and capital Y. Nothing more than this. Each gamete will get one capital R and one capital Y in terms of your, the first plant, in this plant one. one each allele will get capital R and capital Y allele. In this two, they'll be the same, but the e, but each gamete will get one recessive allele and for shape and one recessive allele for color. That is one small r and one small y. So these are the gametes. Okay, gametes. This is what the gametes are going to get. Now when we cross them, right? I forgot to put the cross sign. So when we cross them, we get these gametes and finally when these gametes will fuse ultimately they're going to create one phenotype and one genotype and this is going to be the genotype capital r cap capital r small r and capital y small y this capital r is going to go and you know form a pair with this small r and this capital y is going to form an, a pair with this small y and this is going to be the genotype of the f1 generation and what will be the phenotype? You know that capital R is dominant and small r is recessive. Capital Y is dominant, small y is recessive. So the shape will be round because the capital R allele is going to dominate the small r allele and the color will be yellow because small y is going to dominate the, sorry, capital Y is going to dominate the small y allele. 
this is the phenotype of the F1 generation, round and yellow. But it is a heterozygous dominant. It is a heterozygous dominant condition because the alleles are different but the phenotype is coming out to be dominant. So heterozygous dominant condition. Okay. So that is the thing. Capital R small r, capital Y small y was the genotype and the phenotype was round yellow. This is for F1 generation. I hope you are clear with this first part. How he uh, crossed the two seeds and two plants with these kinds of seeds in the P generation. Right. So F1 generation all were round yellow. Now let's look at the next one. Second part. Now he took two plants from the F1 generation and he did self-pollination in them, right? So he took capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. And then he crossed it with another of the same generation, capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. Both were round yellow, right? So he crossed them. Now, this is the F1 generation. F1 generation. Now, let's look at the gametes. Now, again, when he crossed them, the gamete formation, how did it take place? Now, here, the gametes can have different kind of allelic pairs, right? Different kinds of alleles. So, if a plant, a, a gamete can get a capital R, with it, it can get a capital Y allele. So, this is one way of a gamete. The second can be, if he gets a capital R, if it gets a capital R, then it can get a small y for the color. So this is another way. Then if it gets a small r allele, it can get a capital Y for the color. And if, get, if it gets a small r for the shape, it can get a small y for the color. So these are the four kinds of gametes that can be produced. Same thing for the other plant as well. You can get capital R, capital Y for one gamete or you can get capital R, small y for another gamete. You can get small r, small y for another gamete and you can get small r, capital Y for another gamete. Right? So these are the gametes which are produced. Please remember, these are the gametes. Okay? Fine? So these are the gametes which can be produced. Now, let's again draw the Punnett square as we did and it's a very useful method to clearly identify the progeny types. Or the progeny which will be produced. Very, very beautiful method to depict that. So here we will need 36 squares because there are four of them. Sorry, not 36, sorry, six, 16. So we're going to need 16 squares here. Right? So this is the Punnett square. These are going to be the gametes. This G denotes gametes. Okay. And let's draw one more here. Okay. That's too much. So let's draw it here. Okay. So that's my square. Now, let's have a look. This will be for plant one. And this will be for plant two. Although their gametes are exactly the same, but still. Capital R, capital Y gamete, capital R, small y gamete, small R, capital Y gamete, small R, small y gamete. Similar thing for here. Capital R, capital Y, capital R, small y, small R, capital Y, small R, small y gametes, right? So gametes for plant 2 and gametes for plant 1. Exactly the same, but again, let's have a look at the progeny genotypes. So the first kind you which you can have is capital R, capital R here and then capital Y, capital Y, right? Round yellow. Then again, capital R, capital R, capital Y, small y, capital R, small r, capital Y, capital Y, and capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. Let's have a look here. Capital R, capital R, capital Y, small y, capital R, capital R, small y, small y, capital R, small r, capital Y, small y, capital R, small r, small y, small y. Let's have a look here. Capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. Capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. Sorry, this is not small y. Oh gosh. This is capital Y. Now, capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. 
small r small r capital y capital y small r small r capital y small y the last one capital r small r capital y small y capital r small r small y small y small r small r capital y small y and then small r small r small y small y so these are the allelic pairs and combinations which can be present in the g in the genotype of the progeny and how many are there 16 if you see now if you try to draw up the genotypic ratio well i wouldn't suggest that and even the ncrt does not really function much on that does not focus much on that but here the phenotypic ratio is important if you see this capital r capital r capital y capital y will be round yellow obviously Capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y, uh, capital Y, small Y, again round yellow because round for the shape and y, capital Y will dominate small Y. So again round yellow. This two round yellow and this two will be round yellow. So four round yellow. We've already got four round yellow here. Four round yellow. Right? Next, capital R, capital R, capital Y, small Y, capital R, capital R, small Y, small Y. Here it will be round yellow. Here it will be round green because small y, small y is green. Both are recessive. So there will be one round yellow, one round green. Then again round yellow and this is again round green. So you will have how many round yellow? Two round yellow. Two round yellow and two round green. Two round yellow and two round green. That's for the second row. Third one. Capital R, small r, capital Y, capital Y, again round yellow. This is capital R, small r, capital Y, small y, again round yellow. Small r, small r, capital Y, capital Y, wrinkled yellow. Because again, small r, small r, recessive. Together you'll get the recessive trait, wrinkled. So wrinkled yellow and then wrinkled yellow. So you will have two round yellow. And two round green. Sorry, not round, wrinkled yellow. And finally, for the last row, capital R, small r, capital Y, small y, round yellow. This is round green, capital R, small r, this will be round green. This is wrinkled yellow and wrinkled green. So you will have one round yellow. Then one round green. One round green. Then we can have one wrinkled yellow. And one wrinkled green. Right? Right? So these are the possible phenotypes. Now let's draw up a phenotypic ratio. Okay. Now the phenotypic ratio of the dihybrid groups. Phenotypic ratio, ratio of the phenotypes. Now round yellow is to round green is to wrinkled yellow is to wrinkled green is to wrinkled green now how will you do this there are how many round yellow four plus two plus two plus one which is nine nine is two round green two plus one three again three is two wrinkled yellow two plus one three is two wrinkled green only one so this is the phenotypic ratio of the dihybrid cross it is very 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 important please remember this 9 is 2 3 is 2 3 is 2 1 right that is the phenotypic ratio of the dihybrid cross right so what did mendel observe basically mendel observed that when he performed the dihybrid cross number one was that the gametes, the gametes during cell division or during gamete formation, each gamete got a particular allele for a particular trait. Right? Each allele was given a particular allele for a particular trait. Okay. So, he formulated this one observation. The second observation he got was that here, if you see, if there was round, then it could be yellow. 
and it is best better if you check it here if the seed was round it could be yellow it could be green also similarly if the seed was wrinkled it could be yellow it could be green also so he observed one thing that the two traits that is shape of the seed and color of the seed were independently inherited they were independently inherited it's not that if the seed is yellow it has to be round no it could be wrinkled as well if the seed was green it had to be round or wrinkled no it could be either so he observed two main things here number one he saw that alleles were distributed and segregated alleles were segregated between the uh, gametes during gamete formation and this was called law of segregation this is again mendel's third law of inheritance law of segregation okay and this states that during gamete formation during gamete formation during gamete formation each gamete receives <clears throat> a particular allele for a particular trait for a particular trait okay so that is law of segregation that during gamete formation each gamete gets a separate allele this could be even inferred from the monohybrid cross but i have included it here the next observation which he observed was each trait was independently inherited there was no relation between the two traits each trait has an independent inheritance and it was called law of independent assortment Okay, that and this law basically meant that traits were independently inherited okay they did not have any relation between them right they were independently inherited due to the independent recombination of alleles right now please remember one thing that these laws are not as such mentioned in your NCRT textbook. They are not in the NCRT. I have given them to you so that you get an understanding of his observations, of Mendel's observations. It is imperative that you understand the crosses, monohybrid and dihybrid, how they were done and what their results were. But these observations in terms of laws, well, I don't think they are that important that you specify the law. You should know the meaning, but specifying the law would not be as such expected. If you do well, that's just brilliant because the examiner would think that you know actually everything. You are really, you know, you have studied your, your part. You have prepared yourself. You have done your homework. So it's better if you know the laws as well, right? But as such, in your NCRT textbook, they have not mentioned these laws. But they have given them to you the meanings somewhat indirectly referring to the laws, right? So with this, we are done with the tie hybrid cross as well. If there is any doubt, please let me know in the comment section below. It's a very, very easy cross. It's a very, very easy thing. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, do like and subscribe. Bye-bye. Stay healthy, stay smart, and do keep studying.